okay so my name is nadi dikshit and uh, um i uh, was a student at icer batch i mean i belong to batch 14 um, of icer so i graduated uh, last year in uh, june so i was one of the lucky batches to get out of icer before the whole pandemic thing started <laughs> yeah so right now i'm doing my phd at uh, uh, the university of kassel in germany uh and my project is uh, mostly a bioinformatics one it focuses on uh, population genetics and systematics uh, i'm specifically working on a plant group uh, a genus of plant from uh, southeast asia so i am mostly dealing with the uh, population genetics aspect of this particular plant group so my project is mostly theoretical and computational just before uh, the pandemic started because it was very unexpected because you know when it it started i think sometime around february late february or um, early march we all expected it to go away we thought okay it will just be a few cases i still remember uh, telling my friend yeah there's just 25 cases in germany and then before i knew it, it it had already gone up to 1000 cases and it was all really fast and then the university shut down and i was supposed to stay at home so um from a research point of view um i was not all that uh, affected because like i said my work is mostly a theoretical and a computational project right so um i could actually stay at home and work i mm. could access my computer from at home um, from at from at home and it was not really a problem i think personally it affected a lot in a very negative way because just before uh, the pandemic started i had to move like i had to shift to uh, an apartment of my own so before i was living in the guest house uh, from the university so but then there's a limited contract so you just uh, get to stay there for like 6 months or something like that so they have something like that for international students where they can just you know come move to a different country and stay in the guest house and in the time they can find uh, you know a new apartment of their own or whatever so i was looking for my apartment uh, at that time like uh, early this year and i had to shift exactly during the time of uh, oh, no. the pandemic and it was really scary for me um because here people tend to do things on their own you know mm -hmm. so when they are shifting they usually rent a moving car or a small van or something and they drive around on their own so they, these are things that i cannot do because obviously i am new here and i don't have a license here so i had to depend on other people so thankfully i had i have good friends in my lab who were willing to help me and i just you know moved in uh, two or three days like it was all very fast um but the problem was i did not have internet connection yet so mm -hmm. i was waiting for internet connection and i did not have internet connection in my apartment and that sucked big time because i did not have internet for about 2 weeks or something and it was mm -hmm. really bad uh, because the only way i can connect to people back at home is via whatsapp like on video calls so it was really difficult for me um from a you know like a personal point of view like mm -hmm. my personal life is really affected and um, i think it also increased my anxiety a lot because you know reading the news every day with so many things happening um, it's like a lot of uncertainty uh, and it was quite scary for me and uh, because i stayed at home for almost 2 months i would say uh, it screwed up my routine completely so i would wake up at 12 or 1 every day and uh, it's affected me I, it affects me even now because even now i run late to the university i'm running late to the university because of this because i still wake up late Huh. one good thing uh, one big change that happened um, over the past one year is that i moved to germany um here in german universities i think it is like this elsewhere in germany uh, a lot of importance is given to personal life huh. um so if you go to your professor and say that you have a problem that yeah something big going on in my life they'll actually recommend you to take time off they'll say okay take your time you know you don't have to come so i really um, appreciated that so first when i started here um, i kind of thought that this is some sort of a luxury that some people <laughs> get uh, it's it's unlike in india where when you you know go to a prof and talk about you know, if you know suppose you have say mental health issues you know and you say uh, i have problems and i cannot work so 
the the usual answers that i am used to getting in india is that this is going to affect your future or if you don't work hard enough you know if you and if you end up in a good lab they'll kick you out if you don't you know uh, give results in this you know a certain amount of time and what will you do if they kick you out and things like that which adds more pressure on you but here um it took me a while to realize that people um take time mm. you know it's a way of life here you know, um, it's because there uh, isn't a lot of competition obviously because of the population like mm. there aren't a lot of people to start with <clears throat> and uh, they just have this freedom to do whatever they want so say in india if somebody takes a break for a year or two they would say oh yeah everybody else uh, your age is running ahead of you where are you what are you doing in your life da, da, da. So that's the attitude in india but here it's not really like that because nobody cares like nobody cares what you're doing in your life and i have uh, friends who are 27 28 years old and they are still doing their bachelors people were really surprised that i am doing a phd at this age so like why do you want to do a phd at this age <laughs> somebody who actually asked me don't you like your life why are you doing a phd at such a young age but what we used to the system of not taking a break and going ahead because you think that oh shit if i i don't want to lose time so without uh, you know unconsciously without realizing we get into this race hmm. and when you look back you realize that oh shit this has taken a lot of toll on my uh, health so uh, in the beginning uh, in my fifth year I, i had applied to around five top tier universities and in the us <laughs> and i got rejections uh, so after that i just thought okay you know what screw it i i'll just take a break and then i'll start exploring europe so it was around this time that harshad recommended this um, a particular uh, website uh, to me it's called evolder so where they post hundreds and hundreds of positions like phd or postdocs or whatever it is in the field of evolutionary biology and genetics in general i just found this one project that fit my interests you know perfectly so i was i had to join in august uh, so that was not i didn't have a lot of time uh, then uh, i i was really uh, uh, you know um a little conflicted about it i didn't know if i had to take it or not but again this whole thing you know with the race like uh, my parents said oh take it why what are you waiting for da, da, da. and you know so many people telling me you know my peers telling me oh you got it already take it take it it was like you know when you're in your fifth year it's like um, you you count the number mm-hmm. of people around you who already have a phd it's like oh did you That's oh true. she got a phd position already oh she got a phd you know it adds so much stress and there's so much pressure because if you are not getting a position it's like something is wrong with you or something is wrong with your cv and it's like you won't go anywhere and it's mm-hmm. really really stressful so i think i just gave into that pressure and i just accepted and then i didn't get a break so uh, phd in europe are mostly structured so uh, structured phd programs are for a shorter duration of time than mm-hmm. say uh, unstructured like how it is in india or us so what you do in uh, europe is that you apply to a specific project so you apply the, uh, to a phd position that is offered in a particular project so you already know what you will be working on so that is why the phd uh, usually just lasts for uh, three or four years like maximum of four years so that is how it is because you already know what you're working on so when you join the project you already start working on your project i would say that um it's your phd yeah for sure it's very important but i would say that you have to learn to separate it from your personal life you know it's it's not a part of your personal life so one um good practice even i have this practice is that when i leave my university when i leave my office in the university i leave my work here i i don't care about my work at home i don't do i don't carry uh, a paper you know uh, to my apartment uh, i just don't want my academic life to interfere with my personal life so when i think there is a point when if you feel that it's it's affecting that's a good practice to not mm. mix the two mm. but i think at a point when you start realizing that maybe your academic life is taking up your personal life as well and uh, when you feel that you know it's affecting other aspects of your life too that it should just be an acad- you know this particular part of your life and it's just leaking into other parts of your life and mm-hmm. it's creating- in india i think this is this practice that we have that if you're a phd student you spend your all your time in the lab like 24 into 7 and your life is defined by your phd this is who you are you're always going to the lab you either know your lab or your home and that's it so you have this whole time in your fourth year where you can actually sit and decide what you want to do so i would say choose your um, 
working group very carefully for your uh, master thesis for your major project because um i think it is important your um master thesis is important it is very important what you work on your major project matters a lot because the recommendation because that's the biggest work experience you have until then so it mm-hmm. matters so um and i think a lot of people who have uh, phd positions now in europe like some of my friends from batch 14 so I, when i talk to them a lot of them a majority of them have landed their phd positions because of the work they did during their major project so i would say major project is the most important part of your iso life like even if you don't have great internships it's okay mm-hmm. ensure that your major project you know is really good like even if you don't get extremely good results it's fine but ensure that you do something like get something out of it like you have to get something out of it that you um just in and to ensure that pick the working group well like make the right choice like it's very very important to make the right choice so this is something that i would stress on again and again